Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you on Monday. And what a lovely Monday it is after a very, very good win at the Emirates yesterday. 2-0 against Leicester, exactly what Mikel Arteta would have wanted at the start of what is a very big week for Arsenal. Three games in six days, Leicester, Liverpool, Villa had to get off to a winning start yesterday to move back into the top four. They did just that. Um, just a really good professional display. I spoke about it yesterday. I did my video, my player ratings video and sort of match review uh, after the game. If you haven't watched it yet, have a, have a look back. It's the last video I did. And yeah, I think what struck me about it now, and I was kind of thinking about it, I've watched obviously the highlights back, and it was just a really thoroughly professional display, wasn't it? I mean, this is a very young team. We know that youngest team in the Premier League, youngest squad in the Premier League. You're, kind of, you're waiting for the nerves to start to show a little bit, aren't you? Uh, you're getting to this stage of the season, they're banging the mix for the top four. You're kind of waiting for the nerves to show, but they're just not quite happening yet. Wednesday night is going to be intriguing. I'll speak about that a little bit later on in this video, looking ahead to the Liverpool game. It's going to be intriguing how Arsenal how Arsenal approach that game, what sort of performance they put in. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, but yesterday, I just thought they were great. From start to finish, it was about a 15-minute spell, wasn't there, just before half-time when Leicester got on top and then Ramsdale made that save from Harvey Barnes' header. But other than that, it was just such a controlled performance from Arsenal from start to finish. They dominated throughout. And this is a decent Leicester team. Yes, they're not hitting the heights this season that perhaps they have in the last couple of seasons. But they arrived into the game yesterday in good form. I think they'd won four in a row in all competitions. And they just never really put a glove on Arsenal, did they? It was very, very comfortable. I think they had three. They had six shots. I think they had two on target. Leicester, Arsenal had 21. It was just really, really good. There were so many strong performances from Arsenal right through that spine of the pitch. Ramsdale in goal. Ben White and Gabriel, Thomas Partey, Martin Odegaard, just fantastic performances all round, and and um, it was just it was just a great enjoyable game, and you kind of went into it, and you knew how big it was for Arsenal. I mean, they're all big now, but you knew how big that was at the start of this week, and there was a little bit of tension, I thought, in the build up to the game. I think when when Arsenal have to win a game, you kind of get a bit worried, don't you? And so there was a bit of tension. I sensed that around the ground yesterday before the match, and certainly. You know, reading your comments on all my social media channels as well, I, I could get the sense that people were a little bit nervy about it, but it was worry free. Long may that continue. If we can enjoy that for the next 12 games, for the remaining 12 games, that'd be fantastic. I don't quite think it's going to be that easy. But for now, Arsenal back in the top four, games in hand on the teams below them. It's just a nice, nice position to be. Um, but we all know that that Liverpool game on Wednesday is going to be very, very difficult. Like I said, I will speak on that. But there's, there's a few comments I wanted to touch about. And Martin Odegaard, who was just sensational yesterday, um, was speaking after the game to TV2. And I, th I thought his, his comments were really interesting. He, he said, there is clearly something special going on here now. You feel it in the whole club. We are building something special. It's a group of players who like each other, who enjoy playing football together. Uh, it's fun to play on this team here. We are a group that knows each other well. We are getting better and better, and the system is getting better and better. It's flowing very well now. It's fun to play. We understand each other better, and the team works very well. Um, I mean, look, yeah, you can see those pictures behind celebrating Lacazette's penalty, and you just see it now. And then what Odegaard talks about then is absolutely spot on this sort of the relationship between this Arsenal group, not just the group, but the whole club at the moment. I've spoken about it on previous videos as well. You know, the, the connection between supporters and the team, something that's been completely lost for a long time at Arsenal is absolutely back now. You feel it home and away, in the ground, away from home, in the away, the away end. There's just such a special relationship there and you can see it with the players as well. You know, what Odegaard talks about there, it is just a group of players who enjoy playing together. They're, they're mates, you get that sense. There's not really any individuals at Arsenal anymore. Mikel Arteta has worked very hard on getting the individuals, maybe the big personalities out of the team. We know that, and I think what you're seeing now is this group of players who all like each other, all get on, who all believe exactly in what the manager wants from them, in the direction he's taking things, and you're seeing the results on the pitch now. I mean, first half of the season, it was a little bit sketchy, wasn't it? Um, but what you're seeing now is just a real fluency in the, in the team, and uh, you know the goals are going in. Just it's it's kind of polar opposites. First half of the season and what we're seeing in the second half of the season, absolutely polar opposites in terms of performances, in terms of how many shots on goal Arsenal are having, how many chances they're creating per in the game, how many goals they're scoring. Um, it's just kind of totally flipped on ahead, and I think the main reason for that is 
they all, they all just have total belief now in what's being asked of them and I mean, I mean it helps you got players banging for them I mean Martin Odegaard as I said yesterday was absolutely exceptional Thomas Partey Ben White Gabriel said there were so many good performances and um you know it's a, it's great to hear a player talking like that um you know this is Martin Odegaard who's played in many clubs while being out on loan at Real Madrid and um you know if he's saying there's something special he can feel something special growing here then uh, who are we to argue in terms of Odegaard's performance, I mean, I did speak about it yesterday on the on the video I did from the game, but I just got to say again, he was so good. I love if you can't, and I I, I can't remember who what player it was that the um, Wenger said this quote about. I think it might have been Santi, wasn't it? We said if you don't like watching Santi Gazzoli, you don't like football, and it absolutely that fits perfectly for Martin Odegaard as well. Just what a player he is! He was fabulous again yesterday. Um, and it just makes Arsenal so much better. Mikel said afterwards in his press conference that he, he makes people better, and he does. He absolutely does. And I think with what we're seeing with Odegaard now, which perhaps we didn't see in the first half season, he absolutely knows that position now. He knows that role in the team. And he's just floating all around. He's just beating players. He, literally, it was like he had the ball glued to his feet at times yesterday. And he's linking up plays. Work rate is exceptional. No one, no one covered more distance yesterday than Martin Odegaard, which says a lot. From your playmaker, you just don't really expect that. But no one covered more distance than him. No more, no one made more intensive runs than Martin Odegaard. He topped all of those lists in the stats, and he was the the man who was making things happen going forward. Just a wonderful player. I've said it before. An absolute bargain. Thirty million pounds. How on earth did Arsenal manage that? And what were Real Madrid thinking? I know Real Madrid have got a top quality squad, but. I'm not sure I'll ever understand how they, with an aging midfield as well, why you would let Martin Odegaard leave your club, uh, especially for £30 million. It seems mad to me, certainly watching him as I do now and seeing the performance he's putting on. Can't tell me that he's not he's not good enough uh, there and doesn't have the potential to make it. But who cares? That, that's been done. Madrid agreed to it and Arsenal took advantage. And now they've got a wonderfully talented player in his hands who's only going to get better. And that's the most exciting thing. Um, Mikel speaking about him yesterday said he was a, he was terrific in every aspect of the game what he had to do defending when we were high when we were deep in build up phases in the final third the way he understands and manages the game um, I think he's come a long way since arrival he's showing great maturity and responsibility on the pitch and he makes the other players better he absolutely does and um, he's just I, I saw this morning that he was named uh, man of the match by uh, Arsenal supporters and you know, I'm not surprised. To be honest, I, I gave it in my player ratings to Thomas Party. It was like I said during those ratings, it was a flip of a coin thing between Party and, and Odegaard. But the fact Party scored the goal and had a big part to play in the second goal as well in the penalty, I gave it to Party. But it could have been either of them. I thought they were both brilliant. And um, you know, the, the form of those two is going a long way in this run of form that Arsenal are on. A lot of it's down to the form of Odegaard and Thomas Party. And you know, I, Odegaard was great. And Party was equally as was equally as good. He was all round play in midfield. We're just seeing, a, I wouldn't say a new Thomas Party. We're saying we're seeing the real Thomas Party, and perhaps we hadn't seen that um, certainly on a consistent basis since he arrived at Arsenal. But we're seeing it now for the first time since he joined. He's just playing at the top of his game week in week out, um, affecting the game at both ends. And I, you know, I thought it was great yesterday as well. And, I, and I'm looking forward to seeing him against Liverpool on Wednesday night. It's, this is going to be the acid test for Arsenal against Liverpool on Wednesday. And I, I do want to speak about that a little bit more after I talk about Thomas Party. But he, he's going to be incredibly influential in that game if Arsenal are going to do anything against Liverpool. Uh, then Party is going to have to have a very good big game. Mikel was speaking about him in his press conference afterwards, and he was asked, you know, what. What has changed? Because it was only two months ago that Thomas Partey was rating himself four out of ten for his performances at Arsenal. And pretty much since then, he's just got an upward tra uh, trajectory. And Mikel was asked, what's what's changed? How have you got the best out of him? And um, he said, probably being, being on his neck every day because he needs that a little bit. It comes from the player, though. I think we discussed it uh, the other day a little bit. But I think when a player accepts their reality, when he accepts that... Um, and okay, he wants to be in a different position. You can't accept um, that to happen if you don't change anything you do. So he started to do many other things, and you can see that he's enjoying thing, uh, enjoying being on the pitch now. And that is what is what we want. So it's interesting. I thought those comments. So he seems to suggest there that maybe Thomas had to change a couple of things so in his mindset. And once he's done that, then he, we're now seeing the best of him. And we absolutely are. I think the change in system has certainly helped for Thomas Party as well. And, um, you know, Granite Xhaka is doing a job now. 
where he's playing in this system. I think, as I mentioned it yesterday, I think we're probably seeing how Granit Xhaka is going to be phased out of this Arsenal team. And I wouldn't be surprised, as I've said before, if he goes in the summer he goes and, Ra- and Roma come back in for him and Arsenal sanction that move and bring in a new midfielder who slots into the position that Xhaka is now playing um, a lot more naturally. Uh, because, let's face it, where Xhaka's playing at the moment, he's doing a job and he's doing a job very, very well. But long term, that's not his best position and Arsenal can can change that. And I do wonder now, we've always talked about, haven't we, how do Arsenal replace Xhaka? Because when Xhaka plays for all his faults, he is important. And we've always said, so how are they going to move on for him? I think maybe this system that we're seeing Arteta play now and has certainly had this big shift to I think is how we see Arsenal move on from Granit Xhaka because there's no doubt that they can get a better player in the position that Xhaka is now operating in and that's not being negative to Granit because I think Granit is playing very very well at the moment but um, I do think that we're seeing the, the sort of shift away potentially from Xhaka and the need to have him in that real sort of central role now and that's the role that Thomas Partey is playing and he's playing it very very well when he was brilliant yesterday. So Liverpool, this is going to be the big one on Wednesday night. How do Arsenal play this game against Liverpool? I mean, I'm intrigued by it. I look back to, uh, first of all, this is what Mikel Arteta had to say about the game on Wednesday night. He said, that's a different level now and we have to take the game into a new standard to have a chance to beat them. And we know that tomorrow we are going to start to prepare how we can beat them and we're going to start believing that we can beat them, which is crucial to be able to beat them. And it is, that, that he talks about belief there and that is crucial because Liverpool have, got it over Arsenal at the moment no matter how well Arsenal seems to be playing whenever they play Liverpool they struggle especially away obviously this game's at home this week but even before Christmas uh, no sorry it was after Christmas it was January wasn't it in the in the Carabao Cup semi-final Liverpool came here in the second leg it was nil-nil after the first leg he thought Arsenal got a really good chance here there was no Mane no Salah but still Liverpool showed up and they got the job done very easily winning 2-0 at the Emirates they just seem to know how to beat Arsenal and um I'm I'm going to, I'm intrigued to see how Arsenal are going to are going to approach this um on Wednesday night because they're going into it full of confidence you, there's no doubt about it this team for me they can do something on Wednesday they showed it against Man City and that's kind of how I want to see Arsenal approach this game on on Wednesday night I want to see them approach it how they did in that first half against Man City on New Year's Day there was no fear there was no sense of this team are better than us they they're going to beat us let's just get through it Arsenal believed they could beat Manchester City on New Year's Day and they for me they would have done had the referees not got involved the way they did had VAR not got involved the way they did you know Arsenal they were they weren't just matching Man City they were overpowering Man City on New Year's Day um, and even though the game flipped on its head in the second half and Arsenal ended up losing I think they hopefully that this group of players can take an awful lot from that and that's how they need to approach the game against Liverpool on Wednesday night and that's why I think Mikel talks about we're going to have to start believing that we can beat them because if you do if you go there and you if you go into a match believing you can win then you're going to have a hell of a lot more chance yes you're going to still have to play well but at least you can believe it and you kind of got the sense when Arsenal played Liverpool recently they don't believe that they can beat them they've had too many hidings off them too many really convincing beatings and it's kind of sucked the belief out of them whenever they line up against Liverpool and if they're going to change that on Wednesday night then they're going to have to you know move away from that mindset and you would think they're never going to have a better chance going into this game absolutely full of confidence yes Liverpool are flying they're going for the title but they're still not arriving into this game in as good form as Arsenal is no one is Arsenal have won 11 in the last nine um, Premier League games no one's taken more points from them out of the last 11 games I think it's 28 from a possible 33 not even Man City or Liverpool can match that that's how good Arsenal are playing at the moment so if you can't go into a game full of confidence um, on a run like that then you're never going to be able to do it and hopefully Arsenal will do that and like I said it's going to be really interesting to watch how, how they're going to cope I think the atmosphere is going to be cracking on Wednesday night the fans are going to believe it I mean the atmosphere last night was brilliant against Leicester there's that connection that I talked about um, you know this is the best for, for atmospheres at the Emirates I genuinely think this is the best it's been since they moved in 2006 maybe the 2007 and 8 season there was real belief then you got the sense of that the atmosphere was great then but I really feel now this season it's kind of taking it up a level and it was brilliant again yesterday and I really do think it'll be fantastic on Wednesday night against Liverpool and if Arsenal can get a result I mean a lot of people are saying oh it's a free hit now no game's a free hit there is no th- such thing as a free hit in football Yes, Arsenal potentially can afford to lose on Wednesday night against Liverpool and still be in pole position in terms of the top four, but you don't want to just give a game away. You know, I think a point would be a fantastic result for Arsenal. I think it would help in terms of 
confidence and belief that they can match these teams. But you know, they can they can win on Wednesday night. They really can beat Liverpool on Wednesday night. And they've got to believe that. And if they can beat, I mean, what a massive shot in the arm that would be if they could get three points on Wednesday night. Um, you know, really, really, they've already got a firm grasp on the top four at the moment. But if they can beat Liverpool on Wednesday night, which is one of their games in hand, and it's one that all the other teams, all their rivals will be looking at and thinking they're going to lose this one. They're going to give us a chance to claw some claw some points back. So if Arsenal can go there, uh, can go to the Emirates on Wednesday night and win, then not only will that give them a massive confidence boost, but it'll be a real sucker punch to the other teams like Tottenham and Manchester United. will be you know, fully expecting Liverpool to win on Wednesday night. Mikel's press conference ahead of that game is tomorrow uh, at London Colney. So keep your eyes peeled from all the news from that one. Team news-wise, you know, I think Saka was limping a little bit at the end of the game, but hopefully he should be all right. Smith Rowe, we saw return. He came on as a second-half substitute, so that's good. He should be uh, involved again. Doesn't look like Tommy Asu will be involved, so uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised if Arsenal start with the same start in 11 they did against Leicester. We got a quick turnaround before the Villa game on Saturday, so, that, you know, potentially we might have to see a little bit of rotation but you know Arsenal haven't played too much football recently so you'd hope that the, the players potentially can um you know get through this period of games before the international break and uh, sort of go through it without really having to worry too much about rotating things and ch- uh, changing things up because when you're on a run of form like this you don't want to change things up that's about it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Anything you agreed with, disagreed with, anything you want to say, let me know as always in the comments below. And um, yeah, have a very good Monday. Enjoy yourselves. I'll be back tomorrow to do another video looking ahead um, to the Liverpool game and uh, giving a little bit of a review of what Mikel Arteta had to say at his press conference. Until then, have a great day. I'll speak to you soon.